Hello, this is Brittany Bond and one of my best friends in the whole world, Michaela Earl. Michaela, how you doing? Doing good. <laughs> Keeping it simple. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it real. Um, so I am currently sitting in my community space, Remote Collective on Copanyong. Uh, if you hear the chickens in the background, this is Thai line, Thai line, Thai style, Thailand life. Uh, Afro sitting next to me, all curled up on the couch, my dog. And Michaela, where are you? I am in my apartment in Brooklyn, standing in my living room. <laughs> on some very nice podcast equipment, I must say. Or e is that even podcast equipment or is that like just recording equipment? It is general recording equipment. I mean, it's a microphone. It's some headphones. You guys are... You guys are amazing. So, Michaela, if you guys don't know, she is a document. Got wow, words today. Documentary filmmaking editor for some pretty epic stuff happening over there in the big world. Um, so she knows all the stuff around. I don't know everything artistic. You guys are always making short films on the side and doing really fun stuff. And the last time that we recorded a podcast together, my first podcast in the whole world was when we were sitting in my other best friend Rosanna's apartment in Lisbon like two months ago. So let's just say, I love you. That's all I really want to say. <laughs> this is like, I love you. <laughs> this can be the whole podcast I is just like, you. I love you. I love you. You want to hear two friends just say they love each other <laughs> for an hour and a half or something. No, it does not have to be that long again. <laughs> um, but... I don't know if we, did we say this in the other podcast that we met, like, was it almost eight years ago now in, in New York? Um, mm -hmm. And r like, very synchronistically through the universe, like in group therapy. Mm -hmm. And we, I just remember seeing you outside after it. And I was like, that was weird. <laughs> and then we were both like, I was like, do you want to go get a coffee? And you were like, yes. Why? Well, yes, I do. And then we were basically best friends ever since. Yeah. It was a formative time in the mid 20s um all hell was breaking loose all hell was breaking <laughs> loose in both of our lives <laughs> and then we had each other yeah. it was amazing okay so i'm gonna hand the podcast over to you because i would love to know whatever you want to talk about whatever you want to ask me or just anything i think it's you are you are very good at this so i'm just gonna let you handle this all right well I didn't do a little, whole lot of prep because I figured we would just let it flow. Um, when last As we, we spoke, we were talking about um, Copangan Nation. Is that what we're calling it or just Pangan Nation? Are we? I think it's Pangan Nation, yeah. Do you, you don't have an official name for it. Yeah, no, we do. We just ordered um, patches, like logos and everything oh, for wow. clothes. Okay. We're testing out all the clothing branding. I mean, Feta already got a bunch of clothing sent to him in in Germany. Wait, wait no, he's in Italy right now. And then him and I just ordered patches to come to Copanyong. Cool. For, it just says Panyong Nation. So yeah, uh, just so everyone knows, you can start ordering clothing soon for our new brand. Interesting. Is it not where I was expecting <laughs> to start? But why does it start with your, your clothing? Um, is it? Oh, I've always 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 loved making clothes so and so federico so just everyone knows federico my friend federico and jasmine and i are starting a new company where we want to make a new society on Copanyang, a small island in the south of thailand and we're calling it Panyang nation can you and we have clothes can you <laughs> slowly pronounce the word Oh my god! Oh my god! You have to ask Jasmine this. She's always correcting me. She's like, Brittany, you cannot represent Copenhagen if you're saying it wrong. But apparently, okay. So Co means island, so that's why it's like Kosamui, Co, you know, Kofifi, all these things, and then whatever the thing is after that describes the island. So Panyong, according to Jasmine, it's like the at the end, it's like a nong which it's like you go backwards in the saying of it. It's like Copenhagen, but it's a very Thai accent oh. thing, way to say it. Pan. Pan yang. Yang. There's like a Y sound in there that's <laughs> not visible. She's going to, when she listens <laughs> to this, she's going to be shaking her head. She's like, Brittany, I cannot. Also, you have to know my mom is dyslexic. So like she raised me. 
and I can re- I've read everything in the whole world, but sometimes I'll say words backwards on like not even realizing it, and people will look at me like I'm crazy, and like they think I'm making it up, and I'm like, no, I really think that's how that that word should be said, <laughs> and I just laugh at myself. I'm like, I'm not doing that on purpose. Just sometimes I can't remember how to say things, but yes, and then so Panyang means sand bank. So there's a lot of, that's why the island is um, really beautiful on the beaches is because it's very still water because there's a lot of sandbanks all around the whole um, island. And so it, it breaks the, the waves or any of the water coming in. So when you come to the beach, it's just like really um, calm and beautiful. Okay. Mm-hmm. So pun. <sighs> Sorry, I just I'm just going to say Pangan because that's, I'm English. Yeah, just say whatever you need to say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Jasmine. Someday you can teach we, me. We apologize to all the Thai people <laughs> that were saying the name wrong. <laughs> yeah. Pangan. I mean, I am still learning Thai. Federico says that we can't, we can't do this unless we speak Thai fluently. I mean, we can't do it successfully, and I completely agree. Like, I've taken Thai lessons for years. It's just, it's a whole thing, babe. Like, it's a. I feel like I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm pretty good at languages, and this one's a little hard for me. I mean, but the it's Thai doable. Language, it's totally doable. The Thai language is tonal. It's got yeah. That's the thing is there isn't that many voc- there isn't that many actual words in the language. It's just that the tone of the way you say the word, mm. and that's the thing that I have a hard time with is the tone of things. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so we're making clothes, and it's pretty epic. Because Federico and I have always wanted to make, like, growing up, my mom and I would, uh, like, make our own clothes. Like, we would get, like, um, vintage dress patterns and make vintage dresses brand new. And then we would go to the thrift store and, like, get a bunch of clothes and then, like, revamp them and redesign them. So I've always, always loved fashion. And then I grew up modeling. And into my early 20s, I was doing some fashion modeling and stuff. And sometimes we get paid in clothes. <laughs> and I just loved it. I was like, yeah, cool. This is amazing. I've always loved, loved, loved clothes. And the download I had, <clears throat> I went to Chiang Mai like two years ago and I found a lady who was my mom's age, who's a fashion designer, and her daughter helps her sell her clothes. So it reminded me so much of my mom and I. And so I, I commissioned her to make a piece of clothing for me. And she made me the most beautiful like dress that had, a, I'll, I will share a photo with, of it on social media. Um, it's so beautiful. And after that, I made this commitment that I always wanted to design my own clothes. Like I wanted to wear everything I had designed and, you know, make sure that also that the, the, the actual material was like good for you. Cause it, when you start researching clothes, you realize that the fabric that you wear, it affects your skin and it affects your whole immune system. And a lot of the rayon and like stuff that, you know, especially for women, like we buy a lot of stuff from Sheen. A lot of women do. And it has like some of the worst. (laughs) I remember my friend Rem is like, Brittany, don't wear stuff from Sheen. It's like really toxic for your skin because every time you wear it, it like does stuff to your, the material does stuff. So I started researching like good material. And of course, the best material is organic cotton. It's so funny how it's just like the most simple thing. Yeah. Well, that's great. It's not like a not like a <laughs> difficult fix. It's just it's cotton. <laughs> no, people make clothing yeah, out of getting... bamboo too, right? Like that can. Oh yeah, especially on this island, there's so much sustainable clothing stuff happening. For me, it's not necessarily like it's more matching the two of sustainable and things I would actually wear because I feel like there's the stuff that's super that I find really cute which is like more stuff on sheen and like more vintage type looking cute stuff. And then there's like sustainable clothing that like, (laughs) I don't know. I don't, I'm like laughing because I don't, I don't know. I don't want to make fun of it, but it's like hippie clothing, you know, like I'm like, (laughs) yeah, it's just like, especially for the women, it all looks the same. It doesn't really have any shape, you know? Yeah. It's just like, can we have something in the middle where I actually feel really cute in this and it's good for me and good for the environment? This is like so. This is the thing. Yeah, this is such like I'm a doing. kind of unexpected tangent, but like, <laughs> I love it. Bamboo. I could talk about clothes for hours. I mean, oh, okay, yeah. Bamboo grows pretty ubiquitously, ubiquitously on in Thailand, right? Mm-hmm. Like the f- yeah. fibers whole- can be turned into a fabric that's similar to what, like, 
cotton. I, I don't think it's a matter. Yeah, I don't think it's a matter of like, can it be? It's more of just like catching the local industry up enough to start using it. So it's more of an education thing. It's just like we were just talking before we started this podcast, but there's a whole coconut situation happening near my house where they're burning coconut shells to make it into coal. And it's like causing so much smoke to come in through the community space. And I've talked to a bunch of my friends here and we're all like, one of my friends was like, there's so much they could do with those coconut shells. They can make them into, what is it like, you know, like the plywood boards, they can make, like make it into so much like building material. Um, so many, so many things they could do with it. And I was like, yeah, but it's education. Who's going to educate them? And for them, they need to make money today. So this is what they're doing today, you know? Yeah. It's all things I have a lot of energy for. It's just, I'm like, okay, what, which one am I going to do first? And the things that mm. we're for, they say Panyang Nation is us completely holistically creating a new society from like having access to organic farming to making sure that the recycling and the waste is actually taken care of on the island to clean up the beaches to coral regeneration so it's like let's m clean up our whole island and like make a society that is actually cl like clean and good all the way through and so for jasmine and feta and i were just kind of like so excited okay which one which thing are we going to do first and sometimes we get over excited because we're like this there's something like basically like this is there's this is not working let's fix this this is not working and i'm like no, no no we need to do one thing at a time and also make sure that we're communicating all of this properly to the outside world because there's so many people that i know want to come and help us and be part of the solution be part of all the building that we're doing so right now we're focusing on well, the clothing thing is also brand awareness. So when we wear the clothes, um, we can start sharing about what we're doing. Because we're like Jasmine and I are doing on the ground, like so many things behind the scenes that no one really knows about. And and that's OK. But also now I think it's time to start having people be part of it and having them join and adding their energy to it. So having clothing where it's like someone can ask us about it, we can start sharing about it, then and then also they can start buying it and be feeling right. I have so many friends that are like, just tell me when I can buy a t-shirt, send me the link, I'll buy one, I'll support it. And like, they want to wear something that's, that's also a pride of, you know, our island because we all feel like we're weird, one weirdly wonderful alien creatures here mm -hmm. that, you know, can go out in the world and uh, say hi to everyone, but we feel most at home here. And it's really amazing to have a shirt that kind of, you know, makes us feel proud and represents who we are and what we're building here yeah i'd be really interested in seeing what it looks like <laughs> I'm well, well actually we have them live on the website right oh, now okay. so panyongnation.com this shows how like <laughs> good i am at keeping up with anything that you're doing ever. no i mean even i have okay so this is the thing is i told fade so the, the men's t-shirts on there have been completely verified by federico He's like, loves them. He's wearing them all the time. He's ordered an iPhone case. That's amazing. The patches we just ordered and those you can put on anything. For me to start sharing about it and blasting it to everyone and like just being really excited about it, I need to have a girl's t-shirt, which I really want to have like an oversight, kind of like a, you know, like Adidas dresses, like the cute little, just simple address. It's like a shirt dress. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what I w I'm going to design and, and put on the website soon. Okay, can and you tell some, maybe some crop? I'm so sorry to cut you yeah. off. I just want to look at this while really you're sorry. talking about it. Can you? Yeah. What's your website? <laughs> Panyongnation.com. Oh, that's easy. Okay. Panyong Nation, guys. So, Nation thank you, Federico, com. for yeah. Thank you, Federico, for making Panyongnation.com. I feel like we need to give you more credit. Yeah. He's when just did been that happen? In Italy right now. I didn't even know you guys. Oh, you know. Like right after I was in Europe, so it's been up for a while. And then the, when I got back from Europe, like in the beginning of October, or mid October, I wa really wanted to take over a hotel. So I was like running around looking for a hotel that we could, because so many friends are coming here in December and January. And I was like, okay, I want to take over a hotel that we can like just like make the community space here. We can start doing our aesthetic dances here. You know, we can have three vegan meals a day, like catered and people can just pay for it up front. And then <laughs> this is, I didn't realize this is the first high season that Thailand has had since COVID. And so pretty much everything is booked from just December and January. And then I just kind of was like, oh, okay, then what's the point of sharing the website if 
you know there's no actionable item for people to do and then Feta was like well people can buy t-shirts they can still support and like we can start sharing about the brand and like we st- we are doing a lot of the earth missions which is like the coral regeneration we're working on the organic farming we're working on and doing some beach cleanup stuff and so then I was like okay so this is what I was going to say was the reason why I haven't shared about it yet is I want to find a t-shirt those t-shirts on there are amazing and they're, everyone should buy them. For me to find, to be really excited and share about something, I need to have something that I'm already have in my hands and I'm wearing all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I want to, um, my homework from Feta is to find a crop top and design a crop top that I like, like a women's crop top. And then also, I like crop tops and also the oversized shirts that I can wear into like shirt dresses. Yes. So that's something I'm doing today is just sitting down and, He's already picked out a bunch of designs, so I get it. I love my life. Like he's just like, okay, look at all these designs, pick out what you want, and then we'll like order some and then figure it out. And then also the reason why I ordered patches is because um, then I can put patches on whatever shirts I already like. Um, so I have one oversized dress shirt that I really really like, and um, so I'm gonna put one of the Panang Nation on there. So if anyone just wants to also represent, and they can just buy a patch online. Like it's just like the the logo basically, and then you can just get it sewn onto your. It's very easy. You just take it to the seamstress, and they just quickly put it on whatever clothes you want. If you want to know what the overview of Hangan Nation is, like you should go listen to the last twenty to thirty minutes of the first podcast to get oh, like yeah, an my overview. first podcast on yeah Brittany Bond's po- podcast because we're like really just jumping into details here. The big picture, you can kind of like get that in the last 30 minutes of the first podcast. I I can also quickly do an overview right now. Is there anything, do you think, for me, I'm so deep into this project that I don't even know what people, like I assume people just know what I'm doing already. This is why also I need you to like help me. Like what did I not share about? We're going to take one deep breath before we go into the design of this (laughs) t-shirt. Because I want (laughs) to, I am really, I'm very, I'm like so excited. I'm very curious. I'm very curious about this design. Um, But when you said Panga Nation is a company, that was the first thing you said. You said Panga Nation is a company and we have a brand. It's a company in what sense? Because I don't feel like it has a typical profit motive. You are out to raise money, I guess, if you're a company, but or like make money. But also, that's not at all the mission at all, as far as I can understand it. So I just want people to know that what when you say company, or when you said company, it's not like a traditional startup. Yeah, if if people want to look at it like that, I would say it's a social enterprise. So, of course, we need to make money to pay our own bills and to have money to funnel into the projects that we care about. And so stuff like selling T-shirts and, you know, different thing, ways that we'll make money through the project is to f- fund us to keep going, to put that money into the what we call Earth missions and different things that we want to do on the island. So I've spent <laughs> like 10 years doing community building uh, after working for six years in, in the legal industry, in, the, in a law firm, in intellectual property law, which makes a shit ton of money, and then going into community building, which makes, like, no money. Um, and what I found is it needs to be something in the middle. So in order to create abundance for everyone around, we need to be able to have the abundance to do it. And I can go around asking for sponsorship money my whole life, or I can create the money myself and funnel it where I want to do it and have control over what happens to it. And so this is what we're doing now is by basically having things that people already want to buy, like, okay, say they want to come stay in a hotel with us or whatever. And we, we make money from creating that experience, creating a community, having this beautiful thing for them. And also we make money off of the t-shirts or anything commission stuff or merchandise that we sell. All of that money goes towards basically <laughs> sustaining us so that we can keep going with this project which the goal of the project is to create a new society and 
I don't say that lightly. I'm like, this is the things that I think about all day long. This is like what it comes to be my dreams. Like I see this, I, I saw this in my dreams like <clears throat> seven years ago before I even came to Copenhagen. And now it's just, it's all happening so fast, you know? And a major reoccurring dream that I have is me accepting an award for making a documentary film about building a society. And this is like when this first, and it's a reoccurring dream dream vision thing that I have and I'm like what like when it first happened I was like I don't even know what that's what does that even mean and it was like me doing the acceptance speech which was basically like we did this together like you know like we're basically we're changing the world and so a big calling I have with this is to document what we're doing so that it's a it can be a prototype and a framework for other people to take this to where they live and make one of these where they live like these hubs around the world because I would love, love, love for this to spread around the whole world and people to, you know, incorporate it in whatever cultures w work best for them. Like, incorporate it in the way that works best in their culture and then have these beautiful, like, prototypes of new societies. Right. So, more so than a company, it's a self-sustaining social enterprise. Yes. That's what I would call it. Yes. Thank you for, thank you for correcting it. I think it's just like, for me, it's, again, I'm so deep in it that yeah, I'm like, yeah. I don't even know what it is. It's, it's everything. I mean, I feel like the way you talk about it is a social enterprise, but it needs to be yeah. sustainable on all levels, including financial material. Um, for sure. And I think that's the difference between like, you know, if it, if it is able to generate any sort of revenue, then it, then it's available for investors where we can have like, we can have um, more say in what happens to, like basically an investor can come and say, hey, we're gonna put 100,000 in, I want X and X out of this because they know they're, yes, it can be social impact investment, but they're still gonna get some ROI on it. Whereas if it's a charity, then whatever the, the people who are giving money, they have a lot of say of what happens in that charity. This is why I, I don't really, I don't ever work in nonprofits and charities is because it ends up just being everyone trying to make the donors happy. Even if they don't yeah. say that, that's what happens a lot. Yeah. Interesting. I have not, uh, I really, really briefly worked interned in a nonprofit and it's a different, it's a different world. It's all, it's all politics. It's, it's all, it's all there's, yeah. There's a lot going on. Anyways, we won't get into that. The thing that's also <laughs> interesting to me about your self-sustaining social enterprise. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is that you want to create a coin to go along with it. And we touched on this before in the last podcast. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go too deep. I really actually do want to just get back to the design of the t-shirt. But as a, <laughs> as a matter of becomes coming sustainable and not getting beholden to investors and not being beholden to yeah. profit. You want to create your own coin that people can buy into, which is specifically buying into the mission of this social enterprise, which is specifically geared towards caring for yourself, caring for the community or connecting. Sorry, I said caring, but I meant connecting. They're both the same thing kind of, but connecting with yourself, mm -hmm. connecting with, the community connecting with the earth and all of the any revenue that you get goes towards the earth missions goes towards the community yeah. building goes towards the healing that any individual can partake in right did i summarize yes. that all right so i want to that is perfect and i want to ground that in a little bit more because a lot of this I can I can already feel people listening to this like, yeah, that sounds great, but how is that actually possible? Like so many people have these great visions. And then, you know, when the money comes, things have to go very differently. Like money changes people, right? And I've seen this so much. I grew up in California in a lot of startups. My dad was an entrepreneur. I saw a lot of things growing up and I saw how much money can corrupt people. <clears throat> and the reason why I really like what what we're building is because it's on the blockchain. So I want to speak to this as if someone doesn't know anything about crypto or blockchain. So when you build something like a coin, so we're, say we're going to make an altcoin, which means like imagine block uh, Bitcoin, but it's one of the smaller ones. So it's not Bitcoin, but it's basically the same thing. 
in the blockchain, which is like the computer algorithm that you build, whatever you want your, I'm trying to say this really simply. People who are really into crypto are going to laugh at me. Um, so when you are programming in what you want your altcoin to do, so say we're going to have, I jokingly call it, I want it to be a mermaid coin because we're on an island. Uh, so we're going to call the Panyang Nation mermaid coin. <laughs> Jasmine Fader are probably going to laugh at me because I don't. this is not the official name. But so say we're making a mermaid coin, right? You can build into the programming of the coin um, on the blockchain. It's called a DAO. So DAO means it... I can't remember what it stands for now, but it's basically the rules that you build in and they're all completely transparent. So imagine like coding that you're programming into what happens with this coin. And so you can program in like, these are the principles that we're going to do. Here's some actual rules of like, once we, you know, raise a million dollars, then it's going to automatically give money to this project, automatically do this and this and this. And then every single transaction that you have around that coin is completely transparent online. And so this is why I really, really love it because it can be community currency in the sense that, you know, you can, people can, can buy into it whether they're on the island or not. And then they can, they can uh, also make profit if the coin goes up. But then every time the actual coin rises or falls or does anything, it, it kind of kicks off these programs within the blockchain of what happens then. Right. So it's like, if we make this much money, then you know, it kicks off, like, then we give money to the core regeneration project, you know, so we built in, like, from the beginning, what would happen, kind of the story of once the coin hits this profit level, once it hits this, once it hits this, if this happens, da, da, da. so all of that is in the beginning, all of that's transparent, we launch the coin, people buy into it, people start using it as currency, or holding it as, kind of like holding gold, you know, like holding it as, um, Wow, words right now. So, but as it becomes more profitable, then everything gets built in of what happens to that. And to me, that is the best. This is, I I know that crypto is down. You know, I'm putting this in quotations mm -hmm. right now. I know that the market is down right now. I also know very intuitively and through all of my research, um, since I've been look, I've been watching um, crypto since 2014 when it first launched. Like the, one of the first co-working spaces that I consulted in in 2014, they ha we had a, a Bitcoin office in our office, and so like I, I didn't really understand that it was going to be so big, but I knew it was going to be a thing, and I had been paying attention to it. So for me, I know it's the future, even if right now it's down, and. So why not be part of the future and what we're building with our new society, which is also the future. So yeah, I don't. Does so does this all make? I'm like I was trying really hard to simplify it, and I don't know if it got through all the way. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's just basically we're setting a rule. We're setting the rules for this currency, and they're not rules that we can break because it's programmed in. You yeah. don't have to really. It kind of eliminates trust on a certain level. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. the rules just happen. I mean, it just becomes very transparent, right? Am I getting that yeah, correct? Yeah, in crypto, they have a phrase called trustless. Yeah. I think that's what, it, hold on. I, yeah, it, it just means that there is no need for trust because everything is completely transparent. Right. So um, I am super interested in how the coin is going to gain value, hold value, be transferable, all of that. But I... I kind of just don't, I, it's like, I feel like this is coming up for you. And so maybe we should just place that conversation for another time. Yeah. I mean, this is something where I feel it's like, it's really, um, it's really going to be <laughs> a huge thing. And I, I feel that it's still evolving as we evolve and what we need out of it. So like once we get to the part, it's like we don't know exactly what we need to program into the beginning of right. the governance of the coin mm -hmm. until we get to that part where we start. We're like, OK, we've already established Penang Nation to a point where we know what we need out of the coin. And then we'll sit down and write those things in. And we'll also have our, you know, our community and our society of people because it's also a democratic process. Right. It's not like. <laughs> like this is also why I love it. It's just a community currency. So the community also gets to weigh in on it in some way of how it all goes down. Right. So 
once that gets more solidified we can talk about it yeah because i really don't know yeah yeah i before you make any rules gosh you gotta do so much like observation (laughs) and experimentation kind of um yeah so i think that's good that you're not rushing that i mean personally it just seems smart (laughs) like well, I don't, I can't really, like, I'm so in flow these days. I mean, I'm getting so much done and also, like, there's only so much I can do. Like, they say insistence is resistance. So even if I wanted to push it, I don't think I'd get very far. I just kind of <laughs> surrendered now to the flow of everything. I haven't heard that phrase, but I really like it. It's a Bashar phrase. Oh, okay. If people don't know what Bashar is, it's like this... um guy who's like channeling amazing stuff from the universe i know i for a second i was like wait and then i remembered that i listened to an entire hour and a half of it (laughs) okay okay yeah um if anyone wants to listen to bashar you can message me and i'll send you a bunch of stuff my friend faraday has a bunch of stuff he's always sharing with people so in to come back down to like our details thanks for that aside money is obviously a huge part of this because it's just you were just never it's gonna, so important and never going to escape that I part of the that, conversation not even that not even that you would want to escape it like it's a healthy part of the conversation well, I think, yeah and i think this is the thing is like we can <laughs> it's a, the word that came to me is like baptize it which is a very weird thing to say but like i feel like we need to clean our energy around money yeah. because it has been used for so many dark things it's also such a it's a tool it's whatever energy you attach to it you know yeah and it can be a very beautiful, it is a very beautiful thing. And we can make very beautiful things in the world with it, you know? Yeah. I mean, money is just like a representation of energy in the first place. Like It's like a, mm-hmm. a holder of time and energy just so you can like, mm-hmm. you, you know, exchange it for things. And as long as... It's a resource. Yeah. And I feel like you're in creating new rules for that money or creating rules for how it's going to operate. You are kind of just like really... I don't know, elevating it in a way to being, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like interesting. It's interesting. Let's, I I don't know that I have a whole lot of deep things to say about it right now, but I do think it's super interesting. We love money. Money is amazing. Thank you, money for coming into our lives. (laughs) Thank you, money. Um, We will use you wisely. We will be wise managers (laughs) and we will be balanced, resourceful managers um um sorry that's like some just random personal shit from my own life where i'm just like i have it's great this is what we're here for I, it's like, everyone is going through similar stuff it's a collective babe yeah so we have kind of two tracks that i'm like want to go down my brain is going down two tracks at once one back to the t-shirts finally <laughs> <laughs> If people buy the t-shirt, I want them to understand the design. I want to understand the design. I'm, we're artists. We're all artists in this world. So let's, let's check out this design. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you want to support what we're doing, if you want to support Copan Young, everything that's amazing about it, okay. buy a t-shirt. Can I describe? Okay. I think the thing is about this is that the, 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 reoccurring thing for our t-shirts is the logo everything else is just different um things we're messing around with and trying out okay but basically the main part of the t-shirts is the the logo that that has the two circles um that meet in the middle and and then so they say panong nation it kind of looks like two labyrinths two circular labyrinths that are almost like vinyl records that are kind of overlapping in the center and it says panga nation underneath can you describe the significance of these sort of circles with circles within them and why they're overlapping and does it have any significance or like what is the branding with that yeah so we the the idea of panga nation came to us like all synchronistically and it's like we the three of us had wanted to work on a project together we love this island this is our home we want to make the island better and we were like I had just started researching something called network states which is basically making your own society and and gathering um, the community the resources basically making a society backwards like from traditional way to make one and then at the end you know putting it on the blockchain and having your own coin 
so I was like really researching this and I'm like, why don't we make one of these for the island? And then we were like, okay, so how, how, like, how would we represent this? And, and the thing that we kept coming back to is like, it needs to be holistic. Like it needs to be like the shadow and the light. Like we're going from one, one vibration to another. And then we started looking up all these logos and (laughs) The thing is with these, this logo that we have is if you focus on it, it's actually a third eye. (laughs) This is so, so hippie. It's a third eye activating like design, which we didn't realize when we picked this logo, we were just like, okay, this feels, just feels good. We just chose it because it felt really good. And then Feta realized later that if you focus, it's, he found something um, where it's like, I'm looking at at this thing that he just sent us where it's like it says focus on the center of the image and allow your eyes to relax two spirals will become three and then three will become one and then while you do this it actually it activates your pineal gland and, <laughs> and like this is pretty much representing everything we're doing we're just kind of like okay guys we are going into the new society we are going into the new vibration the new reality come join us if you want to um, if you stare at our logo long enough, maybe you will. I'm just kidding. But yeah, so that was the significance. Like I wanted to make something that was like a, an affinity circle because for me, the thing about connect to yourself, connect to each other, connect to the earth, it's kind of like the way that energy moves between all of us, which is like when you do it like that, it just, it can exponentially, you know, amplify. And this logo was something that was, kind of our compromise in the middle because they both really liked it I want they were like infinity circle is overdone we don't want an infinity circle and then this was something that we all just kept looking at and just being like whoa that's really cool it's kind of trippy and like um if you look at it closely one one of them is darker than the other so it's supposed to be like the the masculine feminine shadow and light yin yang all the it's like everything all the polarities did you have a designer who did them for you or uh, Federico, oh, cool. F- okay. Feta is is kind of like our our background in the background everything. Yeah, you know, I would really I love, love to talk to uh, to them both, Jasmine and Fede. Um, yeah, I would love it if you as do as well. I also like Jasmine hasn't been on the podcast yet, and so I'm like, get your booty over here. We're doing this. It's more just like we're both so busy working on our the working on the project that we need to slow down to actually share about it. That's why I'm so grateful that you coming all the way from New York are like, hey, let's do this. Like, just so everyone knows, Michaela was the one who was like, well, let's, uh, let's record a podcast for your Pony Nation. And I just, I'm very grateful to have friends like you that are so supportive and help us get the word out there more, you know. And Federico comes to Copenhagen in January. He's just spending, he spent last Christmas and holiday season with us here on the island. And so he really wanted to spend it with his mom and sister. And I was like, bring them out here. Let's all spend it together. And I think that that will be next year. So this this year he'll spend it with them in Europe. And then he's coming out and then moving here. So, cool. so yeah, I'll definitely record when he gets here. Okay, that's cool. So it's someone within the very intimate creation team that made the logo. Yeah, this it's, is... Uh, it's this a founder. I really a founder believe, made it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is what I... I mean, the logo itself, it's not like the we cre- invented the logo from scratch itself. Like, this is an ancient symbol. Right. So this is the thing. Is It's like we chose it and we're using it, but it's an actual third eye exercise <laughs> symbol that, like, has been used for apparently... I don't know. I, I'm not going to postulate on how long, but it's, it has been out there, you know? Yeah. Um, but, yes, we definitely chose it adapted it to our logo made it our thing and this is one thing I I always say within you know I'm really into human design if people don't know about that it's like something similar to Myers-Briggs when it comes to personality thing but like 100,000 times more deep and um and a hundred thousand times like based on your birth time just so you know (laughs) yeah yeah astrology (laughs) stuff (laughs) full disclosure um but the proof for me, the proof is in the pudding, as we say in America, which is like, I am a very scientific, rational background, like, you know, studying law and psychology and all this stuff in university. Um, and also open to things that actually are proven through use to be accurate. And for me, human design has is one of those. And I find it really fascinating because I've been consultant for teams for many years. 
you know, culture change within large organization and just like making teams more efficient and happier working together. And people are starting to use human design on, with teams. And the premise is that if you can get a certain amount of people's energy together, then like all all of the resources you need, all the energy you need will just come from that team. And this is how I, f the reason why I'm saying this is because this is how I feel with Jasmine and Feta and I. It's like between the three of us, we have almost everything we need, you know, like it's just like someone will be like, well, we need this thing. And I'm like, oh, I've been doing that for years. And they're like, what? How does, what do you mean? And then like, we'll be like, oh, I need this thing. And Jasmine's like, oh yeah, I already know the person. Like I've been friends with them and networking with them. And I'm like, oh my God, like subconsciously or consciously we have been, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together and when we come together it's like it all just clicks into place and this is why I say it's it's, it's just happening really fast and it's really beautiful yeah totally aligned <laughs> I love you <laughs> um, okay so you wanted to ask me about what's happening on the island currently currently right I did. I was, do, are you interested in talking about the back of the t-shirt at all? The design? Is that also Fede? Did yeah. Fede has been really, Fede has been designing all of those. And this is the thing about me starting to shout about the, the, the designs is I think the ones that he's made are beautiful. The point of that we want to make with the designs is that the logo itself is the thing that is constant. And then you know, each of us, Jasmine, Fade, and I will have our own version of the design of the t-shirt. So we'll have all the, like our own, you know, back of the t-shirt that we design. And eventually I'm going to make my kimonos that I always am talking about making and have the front of it, have the logo for nation and the back of it have like different designs and different sayings and different things that I want. Yes. Um, okay. So for me, it's about, I just need to sit down and pick like Fana's like been messaging me like every day, like, hello, are you going to do this? And I'm like, I know, but I'm busy and I'm, I'm flowing on the, I know I really am doing a lot. It's just, um, so he's just waiting on me to pick the designs that I resonate with. Um, and, um, then he'll walk me through the process of like making sure he's gone deep dive into the material and making sure it's sustainable and it, it, feels really good and it's high quality and so I just need to pick like what shape and what design I want and then he'll help me f like make sure it's like a good quality one and then we order it and test it and basically once I get ones that I'm just like so fucking excited about and I'm wearing all the time then I'm just going to be shouting about it always and putting it in my social media and also right now you can totally order them and they're amazing like we have tested out the ones that are on the website and they're they're epic and amazing um, it's just more that I am excited to keep growing the the collection, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. So this is a good a good kick in the pants or a good <laughs> a permission <laughs> slip to keep doing that because it's only going to grow. Like when I say to Feda, because Feda gets really excited, he gets just as excited as me about these things. And he's like, he's he's over there. So he's not as much on the ground, like working on the earth missions as J uh, Jasmine and I are. And so he's kind of like deep diving into the, you know, the website and the clothes and everything. And what I say to him is like, babe, this is something that we are going to be doing in 10 years. Like we're still, we're going to have our, like our clothing collection and everything we're designing is going to keep evolving for 10 years. So like just, we can wait a month, or, you know, however long it takes. Um, but it's also something I'm really excited about. So it's, it's both of the things all at once. Yeah. Cool. A little earlier, we were talking about how the, one of the core missions, one of the core purposes is to do these earth missions on the island mm -hmm. to connect with the earth and do projects that support sustainability, closed loop systems, reducing waste, um, you know, regenerating the, the coral reef there. Um, so what is the most kind of like, developed project you have going on in the earth mission side and that's kind of jasmine's department right yeah it is but i can i can speak for her a little bit because she's not here mm -hmm. um she's the one definitely i'm giving her the full credit for being the leader of those she's half thai so that helps a lot um because yeah it's a cultural thing here also like working with thai people it's um 
something that we all are doing and can do, but you know, when you are Thai and it is in your blood and she's also part Burmese, so she's got a little bit of everything in her and it's so beautiful to have that represented here. Two, the two projects that she's mostly working on right now or leading on that we're coming in to fac help facilitate is um, the first one is the Coral Regeneration, which is there's a company that has figured out <laughs> and Jasmine sent me so many videos of these from all over the world of, of these the same type of prototype that's worked in other places. So I know for sure that it works. Um, it's just about getting the right partners here and then the funding for it. So what they do is they they make um, little baby corals outside of the sea. So you make them in like tanks. So imagine imagine um, like a greenhouse like for growing weed. Mm -hmm. But instead of a greenhouse for growing weed, you have little baby coral samples that you're growing in like little pots of water. Yeah. Like hundreds of them. And they can use technology to affect the environment so that it grows quicker. You can also aid them by giving them... Uh, it's. I'm trying to make it like... Um, explain it. It's kind of like when you give uh, an amputated person like an extra like biotic limb... Mm -hmm. So if you do that with coral, it can help them regenerate faster. So they kind of give them like a little jump start, and then the coral, it helps the corals stay strong. It like helps them have like this bionic, like a little prototype helps them latch onto it more, and mm -hmm. then they have a stronger structure. Structure to, oh my god, I wish Jasmine was explaining all this because she's like uh, she could say this so uh, much better than me. Fine, but I really do think that we should. Jasmine should have whole episode she definitely will basically so we are right now she's talking to different partners of some companies here who do it and what um and so we're just picking the one that we want to work with and then the next step would be to start growing these coral outside of the sea mm -hmm. get them really strong and the next step after that would be to go and put them in the sea and they've done this in Wainam, which is our favorite, my favorite beach in the whole world. Um, our friend Andre uh, has already done this like seven years ago. They didn't do it in like a very high tech way, like, you know, like with all this like prototypes of, you know, technology and stuff. They just did like little baby starters organically and they put them in and a lot of that coral is still there seven years later that they helped restart. So it's definitely possible. So that's something that we are talking to them about and it's more about the funding around it as well so f what i found really interesting is in researching this is that you can uh, partner with a lot of the tourist hotels because tourism really wants to have people who are snorkeling be able to go look at coral reefs right mm -hmm. and if all the coral reef is dead then people are not going to come to the resort and snorkel or like you know do the tourist stuff there yeah. so they a lot of times will fund these projects so it can be like a really good partner to to work with so that's one of them the other one is the access to organic fruits and vegetables so Jasmine has gone around um, and spoken to most of the farms here because they do something <laughs> where they say Thai people sometimes like you have to understand that chemicals used on food is a is a semi new thing here versus how we have it in Western countries like in Western countries it's been going on for decades here th they don't really know the di like it's like not fully implemented on how much it affects us putting chemicals onto the plants when they're growing and so Thai people here will say oh yeah it's organic and they really honestly believe that it's organic and they also don't realize that the chemicals that they're putting on it makes it so it's not organic so there's a lot of farms here that are saying organic but it's not certified organic as in like <laughs> yeah it's basically not organic it right. still has chemicals so Jasmine's been going around and um, talking to them and really like like going through like what they use for their plants and then making our own list of farmers that are really doing it organically and then something that I found really amazing is that she's created what's called a CSA thing so if you're in western countries you might know what this is and it's based it's called it's community supported agriculture and what that means is basically you pay a subscription and then you get a vegetable box like every week or every month and this gives the, so the farmer gets sustainable income knowing that people are going to buy their food 
and then the people who are buying it, they're knowing that they're they're slowly building the ecosystem for organic farming because they get or they can count on that they're going to get an amazing veggie box of food, and then the farmers can be like, okay, I, I'll plant more next year because look at all these people are buying it, and like, and then they have like incentive to keep growing organic. Because the the biggest disconnect on the island is these farmers are growing organic. They don't know how to get to the foreigners who actually want to buy it. And Thai people don't necessarily, not a lot of Thai people are caught up yet on why organic, eating organic vegetables and food is really good for you. So the market is really for foreigners. Mm -hmm. And so Jasmine has been spending so many hours, so much work educating the farmers and then creating this distribution center and then what we have found is that a lot of the vegetables and fruit that people really, mostly the vegetables that people really want, the organic needs to come from Chiang Mai, which is all the way in the north. Like we're in the bottom of Thailand on a small island. And in the north is where they already have a pretty established organic fruits and vegetables distribution and, and economy. So some of this organic fruits and veggies are coming all the way from the north. And it's like, frustrating for us because we're just like okay well we want this all to come from the island at least it's at least we're starting somewhere um so the thing that her and i have been envisioning is because people have been getting the vegetable boxes and then being like i don't know what this one vegetable is it's a thai root or it's a thai this thing and they don't know how, what to do with it mm. so or i want this thing but i don't want everything else in the box and so her and i are like well what if we just made like a little farmer's market even if it's just once a week and it's just organic fruits and veggies and people can come and, you know, it can be in Sri Tanu, which is the main area that we all live in, um, or that we have a Thai, a Thai mama, my mama Koi, who has a, like a, a shake shack, you know, like it's like a little uh, fruit stand and coconut stand and smoothie stand that we all go hang out in all the time. What if she had like a little spot there where she could sell f the fruits and vegetables that are organic? Because I would, I know I could, for me, I can market that, not market, I can share it with the community. Everyone will go. I just need to know like where to send them to. And so this is our next step is like, you know, she tried the CSA thing. It's working, but not necessarily in the way that we need. And also we need more people to help us with it because she spends like all day long um, separating the fruits and vegetables, making the veggie boxes to send out. And um, yeah, so this is, you know, it's not like, this is not a quick fix. This is this is the work that we're doing and we're, we have so much energy for it. And um, we also are open and receptive to all the help in the world and all the funding in the world because I know that this is what we need. On the, and at the end of the day, this is what everyone wants and everyone needs. And most people, I would say, are not willing to actually do the work to do it. Or they don't know where to start. Maybe it's overwhelming for them. It's just as overwhelming for Jasmine and I. But we're just sitting here like, I don't know, let's try this thing. Okay, let's try this thing, you know. And we're just like figuring it out. Yeah. I mean... If you talked, if you talked to Jasmine, she could talk for hours about this. Like it's like so, it is a lot, you know. But like this is a core primal need that we have to have access to safe food. Yeah, with money, food is pretty much the number one thing you would be buying, right? So, mm -hmm. well, except for shelter, maybe. Um, I think that was like a good amount of information for. Her. <laughs> probably overloaded people <laughs> I think it's a lot I mean if people want to reach out and be part of it like please do because there's so much more coming our next phase I mean what I what my we each have different things that we're leading on like FEDA leads on all the back end stuff the website the anything tech and, and all the the clothing and stuff Jasmine focuses on the earth missions and I do the community building stuff so for me, what I'm leading on is uh, taking over a resort and having a like a, an actual like base where we can all live and like work on these things together and keep amplifying the energy. So if anyone wants to, whoever wants to come and join us, there is so much work to do and it's so much fun. And at the end of the day, we're all going to look back on this and be like, we fucking made a new society. Like how many people can say that? Yeah. And I mean, I'm going to be there eventually making that award winning documentary. So 
You are. I already see it in my visions. <laughs> um, Get over here. Okay. okay, so thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela, for you, having Brittany. me. I um, love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you too. Okay. We're going to officially end this episode. There's so much more to come. We could literally just I talk know, for hours. I know. We're probably going to talk for hours we're, after we, we end this gonna episode. We are going to get off and we're going to plan the next time we talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have an amazing day, everyone. And yeah, let us know if you want to come join Padang Nation. Bye. Bye.